Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to vulnerability assessment and penetration testing in Domain 6 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the second of three mind map videos for Domain 6. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are one part of our complete CISSP masterclass. Every system has vulnerabilities. Vulnerability assessment and penetration testing are an important part of testing a system to look for these vulnerabilities, to identify, classify, and prioritize remediation. Vulnerability assessments and penetration tests are very similar and start out exactly the same way, identifying potential vulnerabilities and reporting on them to understand the potential impact to the organization and prioritize remediation. In a vulnerability assessment, once a potential vulnerability has been identified, we skip straight to reporting. In a penetration test, we identify potential vulnerabilities, and then we attempt to exploit them to verify if the vulnerability truly exists and can be exploited, and thus eliminating false positives. Vulnerability assessments tend to be faster and more automated, but generate more false positives. Penetration tests are slower and tend to be more manual and have much higher likelihood of negatively impacting a system, but they provide a much clearer picture of the security of a system. Here's the process we go through to conduct vulnerability assessments and pen tests. We start with reconnaissance, which is a passive activity. The organization being assessed cannot detect anything at this step because the assessor is gathering publicly available information from sources like job postings, LinkedIn profiles, and DNS records. Enumeration is div. This step can potentially be detected by the organization. The assessor is enumerating, systematically walking through IP address ranges and ports to look for live systems that are offering services. Vulnerability and analysis is where the assessor determines the exact version of a system and identifies potential vulnerabilities that could be exploited. We'll talk about how banner grabbing and fingerprinting can be used to identify the version of a system in a few minutes. If we're performing a vulnerability assessment, then the assessor will skip the execution step and go straight to reporting. In a pen test, however, the execution step is where the assessor attempts to exploit any vulnerabilities that have been identified, actually break into the system. And documenting findings is all about reporting on vulnerabilities identified, the potential impact of the organization and prioritization, and tailoring reports to various audiences. Now, let's go through some testing techniques that we can use. We can mix and match these different techniques to achieve different types of tests. We can simulate an outsider hacker or a malicious insider as examples. Perspective is about where the ethical hacker, where the assessor is performing the test from. Internal means the testing is performed from within the organization's network, simulating that the attacker, the assessor, being inside the network. External means the testing is being performed from outside the organization's network, simulating the attacker being outside the firewall, typically out on the internet. There are a couple of major approaches that can be used in conducting these tests. In a blind test, we give the ethical hacker, the assessor, very little information on the system to be tested, perhaps just an IP address. The ethical hacker is blind. Double blind means not only do we not give the ethical hacker, the assessor, any information, we also don't tell the organization's security operations team that the hack is occurring. Double blind tests not only what the assessor can get into, but also how effectively the organization can detect and respond to the attack. Knowledge is all about how much information we give to the ethical hacker, to the assessor. In zero knowledge or black box testing, the tester, the assessor is given zero knowledge on the system and must rely on publicly available information and whatever they can deduce. This simulates an outsider trying to break in. Zero knowledge and blind tests are the same thing. In partial knowledge or gray box testing, the tester is given, the assessor is given a little bit of knowledge, maybe a user account, potentially even elevated privileges on the system, and some basic info on the system and network architecture. This is to make the testing more efficient. Listen really carefully to this next one. Full knowledge, white box, open box, clear box testing, these names are all synonymous, is where the tester, the assessor, is given full access to the system, including source code full credentials, and full detailed architectural documentation. 
white box testing is much more focused on going through the source code in detail. There are a couple of different types of scans that we can perform with vulnerability assessment tools like say Nessus or Rapid7. A credentialed or authenticated scan is where we give the scanning tool the credentials necessary to log into the system or systems being scanned. A credentialed scan can take a deeper look into the exact configuration of a system because it can log into the system and thus helps eliminate false positives. It can also help with baseline compliance checks. An uncredentialed scan, as you can probably guess, means we don't give the scanning tool the credentials necessary to log into the system it's scanning. This is more of a simulation of an external attacker and what vulnerabilities can be identified from outside the system with no access. A critical requirement in identifying vulnerabilities is knowing the exact version of the operating system and applications. Different versions of software are vulnerable to different things. Banner grabbing is where we intentionally get the system to generate something like an error message, like say an error 404, file not found on a web server, and then look at the error message to see if the version number of the system is listed. Systems should be configured to not show this information. Fingerprinting is far more subtle. By either passively monitoring network traffic coming from the system, or actively sending a few specifically crafted packets and then looking at the responses, we can carefully evaluate the exact structure and the contents of the packets. Different versions of systems, different versions of software, will craft packets in subtly different ways, allowing us to fingerprint and figure out the exact version of a system. When reporting on vulnerabilities, there are a couple of different important numbers that should be included. The CVE, or Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure Number, is a unique identifier for each vulnerability. And a, there is a public database of all these vulnerabilities that is maintained. Each vulnerability that has been discovered has a unique CVE number assigned to it. The CVSS, or Common Vulnerability Scoring System, is a standard for assessing the severity of a vulnerability. From zero, which means meh, no big deal, all the way up to 10, which means everyone should be running, <laughs> screaming, as cap. The Security Content Automation Protocol is a whole bunch of interoperable specifications to help organizations automate vulnerability management and policy compliance evaluation. Finally, false positives and false negatives are important challenges that we need to deal with. So let's define them here. A false positive is where we identify a potential vulnerability and upon further investigation, we realize there is no vulnerability. So we've spent a bunch of time chasing something that wasn't actually there. A little annoying. False negatives are far, far worse. This is where a vulnerability exists and our tools don't identify it. We are blind to the vulnerability. This is dangerous. So we really don't want false negatives. All right, that is an overview of vulnerability assessments and penetration testing within domain six, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam. Like these mind map summary videos, our CISSP masterclass delves into all the details you can learn more about our CISP masterclass here at desktop.com forward slash CISP. Link is in the description below as well.